butt end of a rhino going off behind a Combritum apiculatum bush. And I'm sure it shall emerge the other side. Let me just go back a little bit. I'm most comforted by how very relaxed these two rhino are. And they do get like this, they get like cattle in many respects. They get totally used to being around people, but in areas where you don't see them very frequently and they're not used to vehicles, they can be decidedly difficult to watch. And in fact, at Angala, where I cut my teeth, as it were, we used to really struggle to see these things because they'd run as soon as they heard a vehicle. And in fact, we could normally only view them on foot. Which is actually a relatively, relatively easy thing to do. Shaggy dog, not shaggy dog. What a name. Uh, you say, wouldn't the fungus around the termite mound also contribute to the nutrition in the soil? Yes, I suppose it might. But the fungus is generally kept quite far below in a specific area in a fungus garden. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure that some of the fungus and the nutrition therein must spread to the other parts of the mound. So yes, I suppose it could especially if the grass happened to be growing above the fungus garden. For those of you who don't know what the, on earth I'm talking about, the termite mounds here, uh, much like some of the ant species in uh, the sort of the Americas, uh, will keep fungus in order to help them digest the plant material that they eat. And they grow the fungus in these gardens below the surface of the soil in the mound. That is why they are called, anybody guess? That's right, fungus growing termites. And very interesting that ants in the Western Hemisphere should have evolved almost an identical strategy because they are not vaguely closely related to termites. They are very, very distantly related. They are more distantly related to a termite than you are to a, uh, what? to a manatee or a house cat or a honey badger. It's a totally different order of insect. I always think it's really interesting. An example of covergent evolution. So this is the bull we're with now. You can see he, I, maybe you can't see because they're not standing together, but he's much bigger than the cow, and the cow is not small. He will weigh in at a quite spectacular two and a half thousand kilograms, which is roughly six thousand pounds, which I'm sure you can all agree is uh, quite a lot. I sat next to somebody on the aeroplane today who weighed roughly six thousand pounds. This rhino's also got some cuts on his back leg. And that's what the sanguinivorous, sanguinivorous, sanguinivorous oxpecker is having a go at. at. The bottom there. Ah, magic dragon wizard. What a very long time it has been since we last conversed. Magic dragon wizard. What have I missed most about not being on drive? You know, for me, it's always very much been about the feeling that being in a place like this gives you. So I think it's really just been, I've missed the feeling of wilderness. I've missed the feeling of wild, the fact that there could be a wild animal around any bush, any termite mound, the number of bird calls, the smells free of diesel, the sounds free of engines. So I've missed all of those sorts of things, and I definitely missed the leopards. I can't wait to catch up with some of the leopards. We did have Maribze's uh, tracks earlier today, and we were following them for a while, and then they headed into a very thick area, and, well, I lost them in there. I'm hoping he's going to pop out sometime during the course of the afternoon.
Maripse, a young male leopard. For those of you who don't know, and I mean, I was very lucky to be the first, yes, the very first human being to lay eyes upon him. Well, not me. Uh, I think it was the cameraman, actually. And Paul, it wasn't you, was it? I forget who it was, actually, who was with me. I was so overwhelmed with joy. So I'm very keen to see him. And it was some two and a half years ago, believe it or not, for those of you who've been watching a long time. Can we zoom in there on that sanguinivorous uh, oxpecker there? I know I'm jumping around topics uh, quite a lot, but there was a lovely picture and as we zoomed in naturally this rhino moved his leg i think both of these rhino have cut their back legs or injured them there we go injured themselves slightly just by walking through the bush and scratching themselves on sticks and stumps and that sort of thing there's absolutely no actual or long-lasting harm done there but you can see the oxpecker is very much enjoying the taste and texture of the blood. Also quite a nice, oh yes, look at that, that's beautiful. And the colour is so nice too. Rolo, yes, Ryan have been known to uh, exhibit what we know, what is known as geophagia, or literally eating of the earth. They will eat soil from time to time, uh, possibly even termite mound soil every so often, but mostly it'll be on those sodic areas, so the paler, salt-rich soils that are closer to the drainage lines or dry riverbeds. And normally it'll be in winter when they are struggling to get enough nutrients from the dry grasses. But yes, they will engage in geophagia every so often. I've tried to eat soil where I've seen animals eating the same soil and uh, well it just tastes like beach sand to me and uh, as we all know beach sand is not something you really want to eat. It's not good for your teeth, it doesn't taste very nice. Uh, I hate to think the havoc it might wreak with your digestive system, not to be advised. 